Hello everyone, it's Dylan from Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything, and welcome back to another anime vs. manga analysis video. In this series, I take a character from the Yu-Gi-Oh! universe, analyze their role in the anime, the manga, go over some similarities and differences, as well as their decks, and then finally give my opinion on which version of the character I enjoyed more. As voted by my patrons, the character we will be analyzing in this video is Kiru or Kalen, from Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds. The characters for this series are always chosen via poll over over on my Patreon. The next video in this series will be the 10th installment, which is very exciting because we will finally be analyzing one of the main protagonists whom I have held off doing so far. But before we get to that, let's take an in-depth look at Kiyadu. I hope this video satisfies you. Let's begin. Kiru had many different phases throughout the 5Ds anime. When we first meet him, he is a dark signer challenging Yusei to a duel, a duel that would go on to be one of my favorite duels in all of Yu-Gi-Oh!, but let's take a look at him before he was a dark signer in present day. In the past, Kiru was a member of Team Satisfaction or the Enforcers in the dub. Kiru had formed the group which consisted of his friends Yusei Fudo, Jack Atlas, and Crow Hogan. The dueling gang basically had the goal of cleaning up Satellite to the best of their abilities. They would do this through means of dueling because how else would you fight crime in the Yu-Gi-Oh! universe? Team Satisfaction went on to pretty much defeat all of the gangs around Satellite. However, this is when things mentally started to deteriorate for Kiru. He forces a kid from a duel gang to duel him, and after he wins, he starts assaulting the kid. When Crow and the others try to pull him off the kid, Kiru punches Crow, which gets him and Jack to leave the gang. Kiru then targets security and ends up blowing up a part of their base. He then stabs a security officer and almost kills kills him, which is when Yusei shows up and throws Kiru off of the officer. Security shows up, and even though Yusei tries to take the blame for everything that's happened, security is not fooled and arrests Kiru. All Kiru sees as he's being taken away is a security officer thanking Yusei for his work, which leads him to believe that Yusei ratted him out. While Kiru was rotting in jail, literally since the officers did not feed him and just let him wither away, he is visited by the Dark God, which offers him a chance at vengeance if he chooses to become a a dark signer. Kiru accepts, dies of starvation, and then is reborn as a dark signer, which gives him newfound hope of carrying out his revenge against Yusei. Fast forward to present day when we see Kiru for the first time. His duel against Yusei is an incredible one, and Kiru is the only character, not including flashbacks, that has the distinguished honor of beating Yusei in a duel. Kiru decides instead of sending Yusei to hell, he would rather let him live with the pain and doubt that he had to live with the last few days of his life. Kiru and Yusei have their rematch, and it's during this duel where Kiru finally realizes the error he's made, and that Yusei did not abandon him like he thought. He ends up losing the duel and gets turned to dust due to the stipulations of a signer versus dark signer duel. And honestly, for a character that was as twisted as Kiru during the arc, I actually felt really bad for him during this scene. It was definitely one of the sadder scenes throughout 5Ds. He is revived when the Signers defeat the Dark Signers. The next time we see him, he has completely changed, but not really for the better. The bitter, hate-filled character that we knew during the Dark Signers arc has now turned into a character that is living with no purpose and is struck with most likely depression and suicidal urges. This arc is known as the Crash Town arc. Kiru came to this town to die. The stipulations for losing a duel between the gangs of the town forces you to get banished to the mine shafts in the nearby mountains, where you literally are forced to do manual labor until you die. Yusei tried to save Kiru, and Kiru begged Yusei to defeat him so that he could finally die in the mountains. When their duel ended in Yusei's win, both of them were taken to the mountains since Yusei was double-crossed by Barbara. When they were in the mines, Yusei had to knock Kiru unconscious in order to try and escape with him, since Kiru had no intentions on leaving. After they escape, Kiru and Yusei take on Lawton and try to take back the town. When Kiru comes back playing the harmonica, it is such an awesome moment. Kiru ends up defeating Lawton and finds newfound hope in life once again through Nico and West and his purpose in rebuilding the town. He stays behind, and we really only see him one more time in the show when he loses to Jack in an off-screen friendly duel. Kiru really has three major character phases throughout the show, and even though the first one was before 5Ds began, he was a really enjoyable character to watch. Now, let's take a look at his manga biography. So the Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds manga was vastly different than the anime, meaning Kiru had a pretty different role, even though his personality was pretty similar to his Satisfaction Town personality, minus the want for death. 
Although early in the manga, Kiru was such a nice kid. He was living in a facility run by Rex Godwin. This facility tested kids in order to try and create a solid vision system that could hold the power of a dual dragon. However, Kiru's kind-hearted, selfless personality did not last. Jack ended up winning the Jeweled Red Dragon Archfiend card after he defeated Kiru in a duel. Kiru then set off a bomb in the facility after finding out Godwin's true intentions, and he also tried to steal the Jeweled Red Dragon in an effort to protect Jack. This caused Kiru to become bitter and hate-filled, much like he did in the anime after Yusei quote turned on him. Kiru then enlisted help by finding the Skeleton Dragon, which gave him his own dual dragon, Void Ogre Dragon. Kiru was very emotionless and kept to himself during the D1 Grand Prix tournament, a tournament that lasted a majority of the manga. He defeats Aki in a duel during the prelims and continues on his quest to get revenge on Jack. Kiru eventually gets his chance to duel Jack during the D1 Grand Prix. It is during this duel that his dragon takes control of him and causes him to go insane. Jack ends up defeating Kiru, and Kiru finally concludes that he has finally been satisfied. Kiru then retires from the tournament and basically retires from the manga as well. He tries to stop Jack from going to the Aerial Fortress Sable because he knows Godwin is using everyone for his own goals, but Jack refuses since he wants to gain the power of the ultimate god for himself. Kiru actually has a pretty similar character progression in the manga as he did in the anime, which we are going to go over right now. Even though the stories of the 5Ds anime and the 5Ds manga are very different, Kiru stays pretty true to himself in both adaptations, which I really enjoyed seeing. In both stories, he starts off as a pretty good character with good intentions. In the manga, he was very helpful and very friendly to all the children in the facility. In the anime, he wanted to clean up the streets of satellite and make the area a better and safer place for everyone. These selfless actions quickly changed after he felt he was wrongly done by someone. In the anime, it was Yusei, although you can easily make the case that he had lost his mind and gone off the deep end way before Yusei seemingly abandoned him. In the manga, it was Jack. He then developed a hate for someone, Yusei and Jack in the anime and manga respectively, and getting revenge on them was his main motivator. Once he finally feels he was satisfied in the anime and in the manga, his story arc concludes. After he defeats Lotin, he says he is satisfied, whereas in the manga, once he is defeated by Jack, he feels he is satisfied, and that pretty much concludes his anime and manga storylines. Kiru loses to Jack in both the anime and in the manga. He plays Infernity cards in both versions of the story. There are quite a few differences between the two versions of Kiru. The most interesting, in my opinion, is the parallels between Jack and Yusei in regards to his story. In the anime, Yusei is his main target and motivator for trying to get revenge. He also then goes on to lose a duel against Jack off-screen at the end of 5Ds. Meanwhile, in the manga, Kiru's main target is Jack, not Yusei, and he goes after Jack pretty much the duration of the manga. He then loses an off-screen duel to Yusei at the end of the 5Ds manga. It's pretty funny how eerily opposite these two are for Kiru, based on which story you are following. In the manga, Kiru duels and defeats Aki. However, in the anime, not only did these two not duel, but I actually don't think they had any interaction whatsoever. I don't think they said one line of dialogue to each other, which is a shame because the duel they had in the manga was actually one of my favorites. Kiru dies multiple times in the anime, once in jail, and once after Yusei defeats him during the Dark Signers arc. However, he never has to experience death in the manga, so I guess that's a nice positive for him. Let's take a look at Kiru's decks. The deck he plays in the anime is an Infernity deck. The main gimmick of this deck is to have no cards in your hand at all times, thus being able to use the various effects of these cards. His main goal as a Dark Signer was to get his Earthbound Immortal onto the field. His 100 eyed Dragon Ace is absolutely lethal in an Infernity deck. Since you need to dump cards into the grave to get your hand to zero, Kiru's grave is usually filled with Dark-type monsters. 100 eyed Dragon gains the effect of all Dark-type monsters in the grave, so it's 
it's pretty telling how lethal this card could be in the deck he who plays. This also is one of his strongest cards in terms of attack points with a solid 3,000 attack. Earthbound Immortal Kakapakapu also has 3,000 attack. Man, that's a fun word to say, Kakapakapu. When he is no longer a Dark Signer, he assumingly loses this monster as well as his Earthbound Immortal. His new ace monster is Infernity Doom Dragon, which also has 3,000 attack. This monster allows him to destroy an opponent's monster and inflict damage as long as he has no cards in his hand. However, it loses its ability to attack if you use this effect. Not as good of an effect as 100 Eyed Dragon in my opinion, but still not a bad card for his Infernity deck by any means. In the manga, Kidu uses a similar deck and strategy, which revolves around the importance of keeping his hand at zero. His ace, Void Ogre Dragon, has 3,000 attack points, which is the strongest card in his deck by far. It also has a pretty good effect in being able to negate the activation once per turn of your opponent's spell and or trap cards, as long as your hand is at zero. If this effect goes through, Void Ogre Dragon gains 500 attack. I have always loved the gimmick of Infernities, and I really enjoyed watching Kidu's duels in the anime and in the manga. Well, now comes the moment we have all been waiting for. I am going to give my thoughts on which version of Kiru I liked more. Hopefully, you have all enjoyed the video so far, and please leave any thoughts on any of this, including which version of Kiru you liked more, down below. So, which Kiru satisfied me more? I have to say I prefer the anime version of Kiru over his manga version. Not that the manga version was bad by any means, but I just loved the arc he went through in the anime. To me, it was more serious, more legit, and he just ultimately played these two contrasting characters so well. He was a perfect, wicked, twisted villain that pushed Yusei to his limit, and he was also a character that I truly felt sad for when I watched him throughout the Crash Town arc. A character that had no will to live because of the guilt that has been weighing on him for becoming a Dark Signer. While being a Dark Signer isn't necessarily realistic, what he was going through in Crash Town absolutely was. Life can be really tough, and one of the worst emotions and feelings that a person can have, at least for me personally, is guilt. Guilt just eats away at you and weighs you down, and it can be so debilitating, it makes you question your worth as a person on occasion, and so seeing that demonstrated so accurately and brutally extremely through Kiryu's character, I thought was genius. I know the Crash Town arc is hit or miss for a lot of people, but for me, it is a massive hit. The mature character arc that was shown through Kiryu in the anime was always going to be tough to repeat in the manga, since side characters usually don't get as much screen time in the manga as compared to the animes when discussing Yu-Gi-Oh. Therefore, Kiryu's anime persona is better than his manga persona, in my opinion. And that about wraps it up. I hope you guys all enjoyed my anime vs. manga analysis on Kiru or Kalen in the dub, and I hope you all leave your thoughts down below on all of the points I made in this video and which version you liked more, whether it was Kiru in the anime or Kiru in the manga. The next installment of the series will be the 10th installment, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, and for every 10 installments, I'm going to try and do a protagonist. So, over on my Patreon... For any patrons, there will be a poll coming up very soon to vote on which protagonist you want to see me analyze for this segment. Jeez, that is going to be an extremely long video, but that is going to be a really, really fun one. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Special thank you to my platinum tier patrons, Alexa Baker, Glenn McCookin, Jorge Carrillo, and James Rose, and to my diamond tier patron, Bouldergeist, and to my Egyptian god tier patrons, Sin Cloud and Odd Eyes Vaughn. Huge thank you to everyone who supports me over on Patreon. Cannot tell you how much it helps me out. And a thank you to everyone who just watches these videos, because without you guys, I would not be able to do this. I will talk to you down below. I really hope you all enjoyed. Be sure to check out my channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! anime content. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you have an amazing day.